there's one. Look at us, look here. Look what you got there. What was that? I don't know. In the wild, half of all life and death survival situations involve complete strangers. To make it out alive, Hold me up. splitting up is the worst thing they can do. In this series, that's not an option. But tethered by a four-foot cable and forced to work together to reach rescue. I'm done. Oh. This is a survival challenge like no other. Send me home. Come on! Someone take this off! I'm Rob Greenfield. I'm from Wisconsin, and I currently live in San Diego, California. I do adventures and environmental activism campaigns to inspire people to start living a happier, healthier life. I biked here from San Diego. It was about 2,000 miles, barefoot, and now here I am in the Louisiana swamp. Well, I'm an extremely free spirit, quite a minimalist and focusing on the simple things in life, like food, air, water, things like that. So getting along with somebody who is extremely materialistic could be pretty challenging. I do high-end real estate, and I'm pretty successful at it. My first deal was $2.7 million. My name is Kevin Dutrois. I live in Orange County, California. Fat, gooey bugs that are out here. But I'm doing this for my family. I've got to look good for my boys. I want them to look up to me. It's easy to go to my nine to five job, but to kind of take myself out of that situation and experience what the forefathers of America went through. They'll endure an 11 day journey facing off against the sweltering swamp. Oh, this is obviously a guy who didn't belong out here in the wild and I knew I was in for it. <laughs> I'm Rob. Rob, Kevin. Kevin, nice to meet you. Oh. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Good, pleasure to meet you. Seeing Rob for the first time was actually a relief. The way he looked, he dressed, everything. Because I saw the epitome of this guy that this is his domain. I'm like, oh, I scored big time. Time to turn her oh, up, right? Oh, man, OK. <laughs> right. Let's see. Well, this will definitely be the closest encounter I've ever had with a person. Or oh, another guy? Well, oh, yeah. But <laughs> I've got a wife and kids back home, so. Right. So you, are you used to the wilderness and...? I'm pretty well used to the wilderness. OK, nice, because I'm a total city slicker now, so... I want to I I, I, I I I work with you. I want to work with you. Yep. So... Oh! Holy cow! Huge spider. Huge. So are you pretty scared of spiders, then? Uh, you know, I'm just... I don't think anything creepy-crawly. All yeah. right, should we bust this open? Yes. Looks like I would... Kind of like a parang, I guess. We definitely need this, right? I'd say so. This is something I was really hoping for. Awesome. So that's number one. Um, all right, so we got some matches. That's, that's definitely my, my second choice. Yeah. My second as well. We got a water purifier, which will make our life easy. OK, but Rob, what are we going to store water in? We could possibly find something like a turtle shell. What about this canister? Yeah. Well. This is certainly a nice thing, but I think we can creatively come up with ways to store our water. Rob and Kevin have 11 days to reach the extraction point 37 miles south, marked by a remote hunting cabin. Standing between them and rescue lie neck deep swamps, aggressive gators, and seven varieties of venomous snakes. Uh, yeah, I do. Floating land mass. So, Rob. Yeah. What do you reckon? Ah, the distance. Oh, sorry, bud. That's all right. To get there, to get there. What do I reckon the distance? Is? Oh man. How do you can oh. manage to fall in there? I think it's my fat tummy. <laughs> Rob's got everything. He's kind of quite responsible with everything. I'm struggling. He's carrying the weight. And that is the concern. Actually, you're carrying I'm right. carrying the weight. I'm just hoping that our tether doesn't get stuck to a log and pull us down. <laughs> that doesn't work for me. Three hours into their journey, Rob and Kevin are moving at a snail's pace. 
They've only traveled a mile toward dry land, and they're losing precious time. We have no more than two hours till nightfall. And then what? It's getting dark, it's getting late, we have to set up camp. Dang, the mosquitoes are getting out, aren't they? Yeah. All right, let's get ourselves a shelter going. We got some good dry grass for fire. With temperatures nearing 100 degrees Fahrenheit, even at night, Rob and Kevin set up camp and opt for an open air shelter. Oh man, these mosquitoes are bad. Yeah, I'm not even sure what to do right now. They're everywhere. Holy cow. Man, they've been stuck in my hair. Let's see if we can find some stuff back here. Stoke up the fire, smoke our, our little shelter out. Should push the mosquitoes away. All right, we got something going, man. We got something going here. We haven't had anything to drink since we started this adventure. Mm. Haven't had anything to eat, not a morsel of food, not a drop of water. Haven't peed yet either. Since Rob and Kevin didn't choose the canteen from the supply crate, they have nothing to hold the water to use the purifier. They're desperate to find a solution. Rob, what, what, if I drink my pee, what's in my pee? It's sterile. It's going to hydrate. How are you going to get it in your mouth? I'm not going to pee in my mouth. It's too difficult. Um, I'm going to use the little blue bottom part of the filtration system. Oh, good thinking. All right, I'll go first. Go for it, dude. It's crazy. It's not in there. That's horrible. <laughs> You're whizzing more? Oh, yeah, I've got a ton in here. I've been oh, saving man. it for the last 12 hours. Oh, it's pretty warm. <laughs> At least there's a lot of it. I'm just sick of being dehydrated right now. Ugh, I don't know if I can handle any more of it. I would say it gets worse with each one. Oh, man. You're gonna have some? I can't believe that we're actually doing this, you know that. I don't think it's, it's something that my character can handle. I don't think I can do this, Rob. Man, what am I doing? Oh, man, what am I doing? Oh, man. Oh, man, my poor kids. <laughs> All right, that was a bad idea. Oh, no, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have nightmares. Plan for now is food. Time to get us some energy. All right, keep your eyes open. Turtles, snakes, frogs. All right, check this out. Is that a snapping turtle? Oh, that's some serious meat. So you can't touch the front half of their shell because they can actually reach around. So you just got to grab them by the tail. <sighs> Don't put your fingers anywhere near his mouth. He can take your fingers pretty much off. Oh, he's epic. I see a lot of meat on there. Yeah, this is... And that's all I want. I just want a little bit of taste. This is more than a little taste. All right, so you just gotta chop his head off. All right, he's dead. Well, I've never experienced that before. Yeah, the turtle's definitely one of my favorite animals, but I do believe in living off the land, and that's definitely what we've done here. You know what the Native Americans used to do with some of their kills? Nah. They would eat the heart while it's still pumping. See that? Wow. So should we eat it? You wanna? Mm-hmm. 
Roll? Yeah. Ooh. Well, it's still pumping. It's got the most life in it. I, I will say yes, but I will throw up. I just know. Oh, then let's not waste it. I'll eat it. Pretty tasty, actually. As the boys await their first meal in 24 hours, the lack of protein is making Kevin irrational. I'm asking you to speak some more grass. We don't need any more grass right now. That's, that's Like I said, let's get wood earlier. We're out of wood now because we get wood earlier. And I told you let's get wood. And you said, no, we don't need it because we've got a lot. Now we're out of wood. You're going to run out of wood sometimes. There's, there's nothing to worry about. But if we have a good supply, we're in a good place. All right, well, let's So let's sort of wait till later. Let's go now. Get out oh, of the way. Do you see that there's a turtle cooking on the fire right now? And we're cooking for quite a while. It's... But you need to also listen to me. This isn't a one way, it's a two way. We both have to do this together. All right. I just got to a point where I just had enough and I just said, Rob, you can't do that to me. I, I think that uh, hungry, I've, I've got a constant headache, all these chores and errands. I mean, I'm not thinking clearly. Rob and Kevin are trying to cross 37 miles through gator-infested Louisiana swampland to reach extraction in 11 days. But after a second straight sleepless night, Kevin is breaking down. I don't like this at all. I don't like anything about it. And I don't know how to cope with all the stress. I'm just so tired. And I just want to give up. I just want to give up all the time because it's easier than having to deal with all of this nonsense of trying to survive. I don't want to. I don't. Want, I don't want to. I don't want to be here. So it's the morning of day three, and so far this is one of the hardest things I've ever done. It's been one of the most challenging two days of my life. But actually the biggest challenge is how Kevin's doing. He's really on the verge. He was crying pretty hard. But you know, today's a new day. The sun's shining. So I'm hoping Kevin can pull through. With 32 miles to go to extraction and only eight days remaining, Rob does everything in his power to keep Kevin strong as they push toward rescue. That was a good time to tell you, Rob. But I appreciate going with somebody that's got more skills than I do. Yeah? All right. And whatever I can do to help you. It's morning four. We have no choice but to move on. We have to get out of the swamp. You want to try and take a nap? When? Now? No. <sighs> no, we definitely got to hit the road. My morale sucks. These elements are too tough. What's keeping me going is my family, and I'm doing this for them. I, I need food. I need food. Let's get some food in your stomach so you can keep going, keep ourselves energized. Oh, jeez. See those? Is that, is that a grub? Huge grubs. What are they? Like, what is a grub? They're larvae. It could turn into a fly, a beetle. Look at that. That's what I've been looking for. You want to go first or me? You go first, Rob. Yeah, he's got some pinchers, so head first. Oh! 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 So as I bite this grub, it explodes in my mouth. It's like pus. And it was a bizarre experience, but it was a good one because I knew I needed the protein. OK. 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 All right, we should get going. Rob and Kevin have traveled six days and 20 miles through the Louisiana Bayou. An early morning push toward extraction quickly turns into a dangerous roadblock. A deep, murky alligator breeding ground sits between them and rescue. We got across this swamp. OK, wait, hold on, Rob. Can we just look for? Sure. We don't have an option. <sighs> Other side of this is where we got to go. OK, let's go, let's go. Oh! What was that? Yes. It's all an alligator. Dude. Come, come. Here. Dude, come on. Seriously, come now. Got across this. We have no choice. Hey, I would have been here. Just find another way to get the out of here. 
out of this spot so I can go home. If we pass this thing, you'll be almost home. Just trust me for three minutes. Okay. You'll be all right. All right. Ugh. A little bit further. What was that? What was that? Oh. Told you we'd be all right, brother. Oh, beautiful. I don't, I don't think but I did. The fact is, we just had to get through here. We had no choice. You good? I'm good. All right. I'm just tired, and I'm hungry. Really hungry. I know there's an abundance of crawfish in these bayous, and we haven't gone after them yet. OK. But I think if we can get in the swamps, cook those up, and uh, get some good protein oh, in. Oh, man. That sounds brilliant, Rob. Let's just dig around. Keep an eye out for alligators behind my back. OK. Oh, wow. Bad. Little mini lobsters. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm looking forward to this, Rob. This place is completely loaded with them. <laughs> oh, look at that big boy. He's going to be tasting good. I'm so deceived, Rob. Keep the kid logs and I think they're alligators. There's one. Look at this, look here. Look what you got there. Beautiful. It's going to be a crawfish festival. Let's get out of here. What was that? I don't know. Melissa? Oh. Right. Okay, I just pissed my pants. Hold on. I think I'm just scared. Yeah. I know. Alligators. I just get the fear, you know. I don't know this terrain. Yeah. I don't know what an alligator is gonna do. I don't know what's going on through his head. Yep. Oh. Well, the important part oh. is we made it. We still got a little ways to go. Oh, oh man. With a gator threat ever present, Rob and Kevin press forward with an eye on setting up camp. But the close call with the gator has rattled Kevin to the bone. My mouth is just watering right now. I actually just got really excited. You excited to eat this? Kind of switched off, you know? Yeah. Mm. Every day that you're out here, you amaze me. The fact that you're still here after wanting to give up just a few hours in. How do you feel now? I can't cope. I'm having the hardest time of my life. And it's not because of you. This has got nothing to do with you. And I'm really looking at my options. My options are to walk away and go deal with my emotions by myself because this isn't your problem. That's not your problem, Rob. This is my problem. And I'm just done. I'm only saying this because I want to make sure you mm. make the right decision. Think about your boys for a minute. Mm. How are they going to feel? How are they going to... What life lesson are they going to see if they see you walking out of here? I think they'll be OK. I've got a very loving family. I've got, I've got very cool kids. And I'll tell them with sincerity that I did my best. I'll hang in there till the bitter end, and that I had to just, I mean, just walk away. I'm really sorry, dude. All right. <sighs> Where do we go from here? Please, I've got to ask you. Enough is enough. It's game over. This is the end of the line. You need to get me the hell out of here now. This is what I want. I want to say goodbye to my friend, my brother. Thank you. You've done good, brother. I'm proud of you. Oh, man, you're awesome. I love you, Rob. I love you. All right, do what you got to do. Ah. Man. I was 
I almost feel stupid to have done this. Rob, you wasted your time. Well, I'm happy to have spent oh. my time here with you, man. I did enjoy every minute. Uh, thank you. Thank you, man. If the tethered duo were truly stranded in the bayou without support, mission failure would likely lead to death or serious injury. It's actually virtually impossible to survive in the swamp. They just kicked my butt. It was life-changing. The, the Louisiana swamps are just brutal. After six days, Kevin has called it quits, leaving them 17 miles short of their extraction point and failing to complete the challenge. This is by far the hardest thing I've ever done. I would have liked to have finished. But again, this whole entire thing was about teamwork and partnership. And for the most part, I feel like a huge success. And I'm proud of Kevin and I'm proud of myself for our ability to get along. And that's why I came into this adventure. I don't feel a failure. I feel I accomplished so much. I learned so much, I saw so much. I swam with alligators. I ate crayfish, I ate slugs. On top of it, I drank my own pee. <laughs> that was foul.